the two Voyager spacecrafts have produced some of the most astonishing discoveries in human history. Even though they were launched over 40 years ago, they continued to collect data while flying through space at 38,000 miles per hour, 17 kilometers per second. The planets of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune have all been explored by the spacecraft. At each of these stops, they've sent back comprehensive and breathtaking images of the unusual places they've encountered. They've discovered ice-covered moons, deep space volcanoes, and even water millions of kilometers distant. So what is the most recent astonishing discovery made by this historic space mission? The Voyager spacecrafts have discovered something that is both mysterious and terrifying. What if we're not the only ones in the universe? What is the next destination for the Voyager spacecrafts? Join us as we explore how the Voyager spacecraft has just reached the farthest regions of space and made a startling discovery. Voyager 1 is the first spacecraft to leave the solar system and go into interstellar space. The probe launched on September 5, 1977, nearly two weeks after its twin Voyager 2, and as of November 2022, it is roughly 14.7 billion miles, 23.8 billion kilometers away from Earth, making it the planet's farthest spacecraft. The Voyager spacecraft's interstellar journey has shed light on previously unanswered puzzles about the universe beyond our solar system. However, the Voyager probe's discoveries in the farthest reaches of space may have raised more questions than answers. The Voyager missions have been a vital component of space exploration for nearly 45 years, delivering some of the very earliest and most significant glimpses into the true status of our solar system. Yet they were never supposed to last this long when the first plans for the probe were carried out. When Michael Minovich realized that a spacecraft could piggyback on the velocity of a planet and launch further out into the solar system in the 1970s, he came up with the idea of sending out two probes. This would be made possible by a once in two century unique geometric alignment to the outer planets. Using planetary gravitation and velocity, it became possible to travel to outer planets such as Neptune in as few as 12 years rather than 30. While Voyager 2 was the first to launch on August 20th, 1977, Voyager 1 arrived to the solar system's border first, following a much faster trajectory despite launching two weeks later. But the journey to its current location just beyond our solar system was definitely risky. Voyager 1 was the first spacecraft to reach Jupiter two years after its launch on March 5, 1979. Voyager 2 arrived at the gas giant four months later in July of the same year. Both probes obtained the first close-up photographs of Jupiter using various onboard instruments, revealing the characteristic red spot as well as documenting the Earth-sized hurricanes that ravaged the planet's surface. We also found indications of water on Europa, photos of active volcanoes on Io, and discovered Ganymede, the solar system's largest natural satellite. However, Jupiter was only a stopover on the Voyager's course, and both probes soon made their way to Saturn, with Voyager 1 arriving first in November 1980, and Voyager 2 arriving nearly a year later in August 1981. The mission to Saturn gave scientists a better understanding of the planet's 10-hour days as well as a much more precise assessment of the planet's wind speeds, which can exceed 1100 miles per hour, the fastest of any planet in the solar system. While Voyager 2 only made a quick flyby, Voyager 1 gave us a clearer look at Titan's nitrogenous atmosphere and revealed 10 new gorgeous moons circling the planet. Saturn, on the other hand, was the last planet that both spacecraft would observe together before being diverted in separate directions. Voyager 1 began an ecliptic spin toward the heliosphere, but Voyager 2 proceeded as planned to two more planets. Voyager 2 arrived at Neptune in August 1989, passing within 3,000 miles of the planet's North Pole. The flyby revealed the solar system's coldest planetary surface, with temperatures exceeding minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But data from Voyager 2 revealed that Neptune wasn't as inert as scientists had previously imagined, with Earth-sized storms and fast-moving ice clouds. However, while the Neptune data was intriguing, it highlighted the question of how a planet with so little solar energy reaching it could maintain such dynamic weather. 
However, as Voyager 2 departed the blue icy planet on its journey to the other side of our solar system, the answer would be left to future probes. Data from Voyager 1 revealed that the probes had reached a region of our solar system known as the Termination Shock by December 2004. This is an area in space where our Sun's solar winds have slowed from millions of miles per hour to only 250,000 miles per hour. Although this appears to be quite fast, it pales in comparison to much higher interstellar speeds. Interstellar pressure from cosmic rays travelling across our galaxy causes this drop in solar speeds. However, the termination shock had just indicated the start of our solar system's border, which Voyager had yet to cross. Voyager 1 was the first of the two probes to travel through the heliosphere in August of 2012. The heliosphere is an unseen bubble of charged solar particles emitted by the Sun, and its magnetic field, like other invisible factors such as gravity, shields every planet behind it from the roaring streaks of cosmic radiation that fill the cosmos. This crossover was identified by examining data from Voyager 1 during a rare solar outburst known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME. The Sun's powerful shockwaves caused particles around Voyager 1 to vibrate far more intensely during their specific CME. Scientists believe Voyager 1 has entered an unexplored region of interstellar space because the reported vibrations were significantly stronger than those recorded inside the heliosphere. Interstellar space is the void beyond the heliosphere that is filled with substantially higher energy particles and far more intense cosmic rays. It may interest you that our solar system is spinning through interstellar space, with the Sun keeping the planets together and the heliosphere acting as a protective field insulating the planets, including Earth, from the raw radioactivity of interstellar space. Both probes were built to be powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTG, rather than solar energy, in anticipation of the Voyager spacecraft reaching this frigid dark corner of space. Each probe is packed with three distinct RTGs that all run on strong plutonium. This was a great choice because as the plutonium isotope decays over time, it generates a lot of heat, which each probe converts to electrical energy. Despite its incredible efficiency, this energy source can only last so long because scientists have already calculated that the Voyagers are already operating on less than half of their power. However, power consumption is the least of NASA's problems, as Voyager 1 has recently encountered what scientists can only describe as weird. With Voyager 1 already 14.7 billion miles from Earth, NASA expects data from the probe to be delayed. It can take up to 21 hours for data to reach Earth. While the spacecraft looked to be operating regularly, scientists discovered several anomalies in the data sent in recent months. Voyager 1 appears to have been unable to detect its position in space and did not enter safe mode. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission, said Suzanne Dodd, project manager of NASA's Jet Propulsion Plant in California. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission plan has anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high radiation environment that no spacecraft has flown in before. A detailed review of Voyager 1 data revealed that the issue was caused by the spacecraft's Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS. This device controls the alignment of Voyager 1 and its antenna. This explained the disorientation of Voyager 1, but not the data issue. The spacecraft continued to transmit and receive data at the normal rate and signal strength, but the data received was primarily garbage telemetry data. While Voyager 1 was producing issues for NASA mission controllers, Voyager 2 remained functioning in all systems after passing the heliosphere in 2018. However, while Voyager 2 was still operational, its power levels were slowly falling, prompting mission team leaders to turn off non-essential systems and components in order to conserve power. Given the current rate of power decline, the team believes it will only be operable until 2025. After receiving meaningless data for months and seeing no visible way to repair the probe, Voyager 1 began returning regular telemetry data after one final attempt to repair it. NASA discovered that the spaceship was transmitting data via a malfunctioning onboard computer that had failed some years ago. 
This computer then corrupted the data being sent, leaving the team with months of useless telemetry data. When Mission Control discovered that the probe was using a faulty computer, all they had to do was send a command to the spacecraft to replace the dead computer with the correct one for data transfer back to Earth. According to NASA, there is a low-risk solution to the problem and all that was required was a short wait for the 22-hour radio communication to reach Voyager 1 and for the probe to properly follow the instructions. However, now that the data problem aboard Voyager 1 has been resolved, it is unknown what prompted the probe to switch from its typical computer to a dead computer that has been out of commission for years. We're happy to have the telemetry back, said the mission control crew. We'll do a full memory readout of the AACS and look at everything it's been doing. That will help us to try to diagnose the problem that caused the telemetry issue in the first place. Although NASA has yet to explain what caused the Voyager 1 failure, numerous experts have speculated that the probe may have come into touch with some form of radiation, resulting in a system switch. This is confirmed by the fact that Voyager 1 has been in interstellar space for far longer than Voyager 2, and has most certainly met cosmic rays and particles that we haven't been able to witness due to the protective barrier, the heliosphere. The Voyagers may not have been fully prepared for the unknown volatile and harsh nature of interstellar space, and we may find more data anomalies when more data becomes available. Nobody imagined how significant Voyager 1 would still be 45 years later when it undertook a mission to investigate the outer planets in our solar system. The probe has remained operational well beyond expectations and continues to communicate information about its trips back to Earth. Over the last 45 years, the Voyager missions have been integral in providing this knowledge and have helped change our understanding of the Sun and its influence in ways no other spacecraft can, says Nicola Fox, director of the Heliophysics Division at NASA headquarters in Washington. The next encounter for Voyager 1 will occur in 40,000 years, when the probe will come within 1.7 light years of the star AC plus 79388. What do you think the Voyagers will discover next? Let us know in the comments section below.